quick introduction of myself. My name is Kevin. I'm a technical sales specialist from IBM Cloud. So I think uh, now I believe most of you today uh, are still working from home, right? And we are actually he hearing a lot of feedback from our clients, right? Be it a, a large corporation to the SME, they are having some similar challenges, right? Which is about having difficulty to, to share documents, to collaborate with their employees, to collaborate with their partners, vendors, agencies, and so on and so forth. So I think we have uh, gotten, gotten a lot of feedback saying that they have, for example, there are a few uh, use cases that they actually uh, share with us. For example, now the, most of most of companies are going for the social uh, marketing. Right? They are engaging a lot of uh, marketing or designers to actually uh, design the artwork and they are trying to send to their corporate HQ for review. Right? And some of the clients, they are also saying that they have difficulty to actually share their logs uh, across uh, the different environments because suddenly the internet banking or the mobile banking are, are getting a lot of transactions and, and the logs are also getting larger and they have difficulty to actually share across uh, different uh, locations. And also some of the use cases that um, they, they are actually inviting some, the vendor to submit the proposal because they want to avoid the physical contact and they are having difficulty to collaborate with so many vendors that they are actually dealing with for them to submit a huge documents into their uh, procurement system. So um, then they, they are trying to use the common emails uh, or using some corporate email, but usually the corporate email would block their large attachment. And it, they turn to using the public emails and they have the security concern on sending the, the confidential documents and so on. And some, they are actually going to public box, but again, the file security is always the main concern uh, when they share their files in, in the public box, right? And, and one of the concerns also, they are not able to manage the multi-party file collaboration effectively because now they are dealing with so many part partners or parties that actually work remotely and they are not able to monitor the file sharing activities and also uh, they are not able to monitor the file transfer activity. Right? And more importantly is that when they try to upload the files to the, their box or email, yeah, it actually takes a long, long time to upload and download. Right? That actually gives a very uh, negative uh, user experience. So uh, having all this feedback, uh, IBM is trying to do our part right, to, to, to assist our clients by offering uh, a free 90 days access to our uh, Xperia on cloud solution, basically to help our clients to go through this uh, critical uh, moment, especially during the MCO where everyone is working from home and help them to transition to a remote work environment that require a very high speed file sharing and with team collaboration feature. So the, the objective of the, the expert on cloud essentially will help our clients to, to address their slowness in transferring and also unreliability in terms of sending across the network, especially uh, working in a very far location without a good network uh, bandwidth. And we are trying to have this expert on cloud to help you to send any document with any size. It could be a small size, but huge volume, or if it can be a very huge file for example, into gig, meg, that megabyte or gigabyte, right? And regardless of distance, we can even send the file across from, from Malaysia to the United States in a, in a matter of seconds. Right. And if you're, you're having a, a different storage, file storage location in different location, be it on premise or, or on cloud, we can also help you to move the files uh, seamlessly. So to, now, the, to, to get started, it's very simple, right? You just go to ibm.com cloud slash Xperia, and this is what you will be seeing on, on the page, right? So what is what, what we are offering here to our clients is that you can actually click on the get free 90 day subscription here. And what is included in this 90 day subscription it actually allows you to, it gives you a free access to the Xperia on cloud for 90 days and it gives you up to one terabyte of data transfer volume, one terabyte of storage on cloud, and up to 2,500 users for single organizations to collaborate, right? And also 10 terabyte of egress. Now, 
once you are at this page, uh, after you click on the free 90 day subscription, you will come to a registration page, right? So everything uh, is pretty self service here and it's very simple for you to get started. And all you need is just to go through these five or uh, six steps, okay, to, to get uh, yourself onboarded. Now, in the self service registration, what is needed from, uh, from you is basically to create the Xperia account, uh, which is equivalent to the IBM ID. So you just need to sub uh, provide the company name, company email address, uh, the admin first name, last name, password, country, state, and contact details. So once you have filled up this detail and you click next, um, you should be able to receive an email from your inbox folder. So you, what you need to do next is just to get this activation code from your email, copy this code and return back to the sign up page just now and paste it from there. Right? And this code is only valid for 30 minutes. So after you put in the activation code, next thing, you are actually going through the onboarding process. Okay. So what you need to do at this uh, step is basically to enter your organization profile. Uh, for example, you put in your company name and also you choose your own subdomain name that you want to, uh, to share with your clients, your partners and vendors. So essentially it could be something like uh, HTTPS, uh, mycompany.ibmxpire.com. Okay or abc.ibmxpire.com. So you own your own domain, or you own your own subdomain for this particular uh, Xperia instance on cloud. Then you upload your company logo. And of course you can also upload your background images to reflect your corporate identity uh, look and feel. So the step three is that once you gotten the, uh, the organization profile created, now you need to just create workspaces and these workspaces essentially it will represent how you are going to organize the, uh, the file or folder structure. Right? Usually we are seeing a client, they will uh, create a workspace for HR, finance, sales, vendor, depending on your, uh, your needs. Right? Maybe in this case, you are sharing the file with your vendor. So maybe you create the vendor based on region. Then you can have Penang, KL, Johor, and so on and so forth. Right? So for each workspace that you, are create, you have created, you will then need to start inviting members to join and collaborate with respective workspace. Certain workspaces you would like to just restrict to your internal staff, for example, for finance department, you only invite your finance uh, department's member to join. Maybe for the uh, vendor workspace, you will actually invite your third party vendors or your business partner to join. So it really depends on your needs. And the last part is that once the member are invited, you will be able to receive an email. Uh, it's a welcome email from, from your organization to them. And your client will be able to just to click on enter now okay, from your email address. So the, the, um, the onboarding process is very straightforward. Okay, after creating a workspace, you get the members to come in. Okay, so once the member uh, click on the, um, um, the previous link, they will bring they will come to this page where you have actually designed your uh, organization uh, uh, look and feel uh, the, the landing page per se coming to your subdomain .com. So your member will start logging into the system and they will choose which folder or which file that they want to upload from their respective machine. Right? So let's say today I have a very huge file that I'm designing some marketing um, uh, design some artwork that I want to upload to, some movies for the marketing event, I will just click upload and then I will browse to my local uh, desktop to select a particular file that I want to uh, put into the uh, Xperia. Right? In this case, I'm choosing the marketing event video file, which is a very huge, I think it's a 500 over Mac file. Okay. And once you upload the file, uh, the members within the workspace will receive the email notification as well. And they will just need to click on open folder and that's where they can start downloading the file from the Xperia. Now, another option for the member they can do is they can do the person to person file transfer as well, right? So not just about uploading and downloading, but they can do a one-to-one -one file transfer as what you normally do via email, right? Today, 
if you want to send one file to your to 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 your to a uh, to an email address, you just go to email and then you put in your email address, then you attach a file. So that is the common email way. But the problem with the common email way is that you, you usually you have challenges to attach a very huge file to send across. So with Aspera, once you go into the uh, the package uh, option, which it looks similar to the email uh, look and feel, you have an inbox, you have a send, you have a draft, you have an archive, right? So it's it's, it looks almost similar to the email uh, look and feel, but underlying is actually using the Aspera technology for you to send the large file across from you to another person. Okay? So what you need to do at this point is basically to provide the recipient e uh, email ID. Okay? And you can even do like BCC or CC and putting in the subject in your header for this particular package to send across. So the package uh, could be could be a single file, or it could be a, a, a group of multiple folders into one single package, right? So once you upload the file and you click send, and you can even uh, put in additional security for protection purpose. For the file, I want to protect with password, right? So you just need to send set the password policy, and the receiver will be able to receive the email from the uh, email uh, server. Now the, lab, the, the step six, you can go even further, okay, to enjoy the advanced feature of Aspera to have the workflow configured based on your needs. Right? Maybe you want to configure a workflow, for example, I want to keep listening for a new files coming in every, every minute or every hour. So when there is a file detected from the folder, I will do some certain action to this file. Right? Certain action, for example, I want to uh, have a, a retry policy, okay, and I want to retry for three times in this case. Or you can set like after three three times attempt, um, there's no that still fail to send, then I will keep it as a, a backup copy and so on. And you may want to specify additional transport encryption uh, using the AES one two eight. So this is one of the uh, um, high security encryption methodology you can choose when you are sending the files from one person to another person. And you can also configure the file, resume, file transfer resume policy. Let's say, for example, if after three times say a trend within an hour, right, what I'm going to do, what am I going to do with this file? Shall I delete it? Or shall I uh, put it into a folder? Or shall I resend it to another person or another team member? So you can also co uh, configure the override policy. Uh, uh, am I going to override if it's the same file or is the same fit, same file name or if there is any change in the file size? All this is allows you to control uh, the file integrity and also um, to make sure that the file is successfully sent. Now, we have come across a lot of situations whereby people are sending files across to the recipient, but somehow the files get corrupted without knowing. So when, files, when the files are received by the recipient, they assume that this is the file that they are going to process. And who knows that the files actually in, was actually incompletely sent, right? Some, some data in the, in the, in the between are actually uh, truncated. So the Aspera will be able to detect such uh, uh, integrity. They will do the parity check, make sure that the files are exactly the same when, it's, when it comes from the sender to the receiver. Okay. So the last step uh, is about once you have all these files are being moved from one party to another person, from one workspace to another workspace, you can actually do the real-time monitoring for all these activities. And you can even monitor like, oh, okay, now uh, which workspace are being uh, activated for sending files and where are they now in terms of sending the files? And maybe you can tell that, oh, now the file is sending at 90%. 95% and 99%. So all this will actually improve a lot of uh, operational uh, efficiency. And also it will also tell you that which user is currently uh, doing the file transfer at this particular moment and how many files they are actually sending and how many uh, the network bandwidth they are actually using right now. So, um, so I think uh, this is roughly what I'm going to share. And, to, to get started, uh, it's very simple. You just go to this link again and you just click sign 
signed up with 90 day subscription. And if you want to know more about the detail, you can just watch the video that is a video YouTube uh, to guide you through step by step to get yourself uh, signed up for this uh, subscription. So I think uh, basically this one will share. And if you have any question, uh, feel free to reach out to us uh, uh, after this. Uh, we are more than happy to assist you to get yourself uh, on board to this uh, experiment of the cloud.